You know, I have a question to ask you guys. Every Nintendo gamester who's worth a damn knows this one. What's the difference between this and this? I'll give you some time to answer. Time's up. If you said Mario Superstar Baseball, you'd be right. But if you want the extra virgin points like I do, you would have said Nintendo Pennant Chase Baseball. I'm not actually holding it because it doesn't exist. It never came out. Yep, baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and our favorite purple cube console with a handle on it. Name a more iconic foursome. All jokes aside, at this point in gaming history, Nintendo wasn't really into sports games, with the exception of the aforementioned Mario spinoffs. It wasn't always like this, though. In the SNES era, you had the Ken Griffey Jr. series that continued all the way to the N64. Hi, this is Ken Griffey Jr. Let's play Major League Baseball. It's showtime. Home, home, home. With the final game being Ken Griffey's Slugfest. Not to be confused with the Slugfest games by Midway where you can literally punch people. Fields it off the mound. He is safe. Also, why Ken Griffey? Well, firstly, he's awesome. Secondly, Nintendo owned the Seattle Mariners at the time. So they made a game where Ken Griffey, a player that plays for the team that they own, is the only real player in the game. And on the N64, you had NBA Courtside, which stopped with NBA Courtside 2002. Yeah, Nintendo was more involved in sports than you thought, huh? For some people, it's as weird as if ESPN started broadcasting video game tournaments or something. And we welcome you inside our studios here in Bristol, Connecticut. During the GameCube era, way more MLB games were being made by third parties and put onto the GameCube. All-Star Baseball, MLB Slugfest, Home Run King, High Heat Baseball, and the legendary MVP Baseball. If you want to know why that game is more legendary, you can click right here. But I guess if you're on desktop, you can click over. Well, they took away the annotations now, so I guess what I'm trying to say is there was so much competition that companies heavily started to discount their games. I mean, these companies had to do something to differentiate themselves for the casual player. I mean, what can you really say to them? My baseball game is more baseballier. <laughs> anyway, this changed when 2K bought the MLB video game license. You know all those games I just mentioned? They'll be gone in 2006. Only one left. That one has no intention of being on the GameCube at all. I just find it a little funny that we went from an oversaturated market of North American sports games to just one per league now. What the hell happened? The deal 2K made with the MLB for the MLB license means that no third party can make an MLB game, but first parties can. Sony already had their MLB games going strong on PS2. Nintendo, however, had their own ace up their sleeve in development. And in January 2005, they would announce Pennant Chase Baseball being developed by Exile Interactive, who developed the World Series 2K baseball games. I remember seeing this trailer when I was younger and I was hyped. Another baseball game? But this one's by Nintendo. They never make anything bad, ever. This is all we'll ever see of the game, at least in video form. Looking at the game and the screenshots that were released, there are some concerns that I have now. The animations look very janky and it seems that there are no good looking bridge in between the animations. Everyone loads up their swing in the same way. Also, one of my favorite things about modern sports games is that the games capture the style of individual players. It separates the likes of David Ortiz, the cover athlete for your game, and Brian Giles. My issue in this particular sense is that in these screenshots, David Ortiz and Brian Giles share the exact same batting stance. And before you guys shoot projectile salt in my face saying that I'm asking too much for a GameCube game, check this out. Here is MVP Baseball 2005, a game that's releasing on a GameCube on the same year. Here's David Ortiz's batting stance, and here's Brian Giles. I assure you guys, it can happen. It has happened before. 
Don't get me wrong, though. I'm not trying to shit on the game or anything, but I think Nintendo felt the same way that I did because they delayed the game from its April release date, which was already after the release date of the other baseball games, by the way, and announced it will drop in June. In the meantime, developers held private press events, mostly showing off their speed mode, no Keanu Reeves included. The game mode is just supposed to be pitcher versus batter with all the fielding and everything else handled by simulation. This is meant to make games go faster because you know, people who buy baseball games actually hate baseball and have no interest in playing it, I guess. The fuck? The winner would get, of all things, a signed copy of The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker by Miyamoto. I just want to point out that the IGN guy that took part in this tournament was something else. An unstoppable baseball monster advancing through the tournament with measurable trace and ease. Nintendo of America's Tom Harlan was the first of all victim to my ability. When push came to suit, Harlan stumbled hard and was promptly defeated. Up into oblivion later that evening did he, t did he temporarily subdue the pain that accompanied his embarrassing loss. The final man had decided to let Berghammer take it. I already had a signed copy of Wind Waker, and I knew the GBA would make a nice present for someone. Also it, was, also, it was really cold outside and my hands were starting to cramp up. Plus, there was a number of distractions, including the arrival of Nintendo of America execs Perrin Kaplan and Reggie. For all these reasons, I conceded defeat. IGN editor from 2005. I just have one thing to say. Take it easy, it's just a video game. A little bit of time passes and E3 comes around. Now, I'd just like to point out that E3 in 2005 was in May, which is three months since the other baseball games came out. But anyway, at E3, Penn and Chase Baseball was not included in Nintendo's press conference, to my disappointment. You no, know, screw you, Reggie. Sony taught me E3's worthless anyway. That's Sony's issue, not my problem. Penn and Chase Baseball was on the floor, playable for people at E3, though. This is the only footage we would see of the game outside of the initial trailer. The graphics look... nice, I guess? I mean, this is just a step above toaster quality, so it's a little hard to tell. The presentation seems nice. Nice replay on a close play. Commentary sounds standard, but not offensive. And I like that there are first and third base coaches on the field, something that MVP Baseball didn't even have. But another thing MVP Baseball didn't have was players that move like they have a stick up their ass when they're on defense. Huh? What? Another thing is the bat reticle. Let me explain real quick. Pen and Chase Baseball used the reticle to simulate bat on ball contact. So if you swing and the bat is on the ball, contact would be made, assuming you have good swing timing. Different types of hits occur when the point of contact is different. For instance, having the ball underneath the bat will result in a fly ball, while having the bat on top of the ball should result in a ground ball. It seems this is a little wonky in Pen and Chase Baseball. Contact that seemingly should be in the air is on the ground and vice versa. I guess you can say I'm being too harsh on a game that's not done yet, but the game is scheduled to come out in a month. Not unless they're using an old build of the game for some reason, this is more or less the final product. I think when Nintendo Pen and Chase Baseball steps onto the field, uh, players will be really excited and have a lot of different modes. They'll be able to play the game really the way they want to and get a great Nintendo uh, experience out of it. Unfortunately, Pen and Chase Baseball will be delayed indefinitely, aka it was canceled. I hate when companies don't release a game when it's already finished. You put so much time, effort, and resources into it. Why not just release it? Even if it bombs and you never plan on revisiting it again, at least make something on it. Yeah, it's silly. It's like if I were to make a video and then just never finish. Okay, so what happened here? Steve Snake, love the name, senior engineer of the game, said that the game was completed and passed submission but was not released. Unseen64, popular gaming site that covers cancelled video games and the like, states that the game was created because 2K's lack of MLB support on the GameCube. And when 2K announced that MLB 2K6 would have a GameCube release, they cancelled Penetrate's Baseball quietly. That's all well and good, but there's no source whatsoever to this claim besides some random guy who made a comment on the article. Not unless he MLAs that shit, I'm not taking it as legit. Nintendo themselves will go on to release the Wii. Because the Wii is essentially an underpowered gimmick, a lot of the sports games on the console would receive either arcade games like Nicktoons MLB. Okay, it's time to dance now! 
yes, this game is real, or games that had motion control gimmicks attached to it. MLB 2K12 was the last MLB game by 2K, thus leaving MLB games for non-PlayStation owners in a limbo. The Wii U would come out and nobody would give a shit. Not only did this thing not get support for sports games, they didn't get support from anyone in general. However, when the Switch came out, the tide turned a little bit. The NBA games made their way onto the console. Madden hasn't come yet, but... That's probably for the best. And starting in 2021, the MLB The Show series will leave PlayStation exclusivity and make a multi-platform debut, Switch included. Pennant Chase Baseball probably wouldn't have set the world on fire if it was released. But it was just interesting to see what Nintendo's mindset was when it comes to sports games at the time. Going all in, then abruptly backing out. I guess you could say it's like Nintendo's relationship with the content creators. 